All right. Hi, everyone. My name's Devin, and I'm here with the Future Maker Mobile Learning Lab based out of WSU Tech to talk to you all about some engineering design process and rapid prototyping. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So first up, what is rapid prototyping? So rapid prototyping is where we already have our design already made of whatever we're wanting to actually make with our own hands, say if it's like a house or a car, uh, but we're wanting to test the design, make sure it's really gonna work out. So what you would do is with your design, you would make it a whole lot smaller and make a small scale model of whatever it is you're trying to make to test and make sure that everything works out just right. And you would wanna use materials that are either kind of similar or can stand in. So like maybe metal you don't wanna always use because that can get expensive, but you could use wood instead. So what we're gonna do today with a little project is we're gonna try some architectural design, so making houses and make a rapid prototype model of our house that we're gonna design. So there are a few different materials that you are going to need. First up is 30 three by five note cards. So 30 is a lot, so I expect some really, really cool houses out of this. Then we need a roll of clear tape Really, it just matters that it's a roll of tape, but the clearer, the cooler, right? A pair of scissors, safety or otherwise. And then one ruler, so you can get some nice straight angular edges. Make it look really cool. And the last material that you are going to need is a copy of our customer spec sheet which you'll find in a link below in the description. So go ahead and pause this video and come back once you have all of your materials. All right, welcome back. So now that you have all of your materials, let's go ahead and run through the spec sheet real quick. So you'll notice we've got four main parts to our spec sheet. The first is our story with our project. So really it's just that you're an architectural engineer that's been tasked with a job to make a house design for a really rich customer. So since they have plenty of money, they want a really cool house out of this. And next up is gonna be our design criteria. So that's just our way of saying everything that our house needs to have. If our house doesn't have each and every one of these requirements, our customer isn't gonna to be too happy and they might not choose us to make their house at the end. And next is our customer's personal preferences. So this is stuff that they really, really like, but it's not super important that our house has all of that. They'll just be really happy if they can end up having all of that in their house. And last up is a few tips that we have for engineering design as you're going through in case you hit any like walls in your design process or if any of it is a little challenging. So from here, it, if you're making a really cool house, usually it's gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes. So go ahead and pause this video and come back once you've finished designing your house and making a scale model of it. See you in a bit. Whew, building houses sure is hard work, but hopefully you had some fun building your model house during our project today. So I wanna go ahead and take a little bit of time to show you my model that I came up with. So just like each of your models, it's gonna follow all the design criteria that we had. So you'll notice it's got a slanted roof to protect the house from rain and hail. And then we have our door here that's three inches tall by two inches wide, so we can easily go in and outside of the house. And then we've got two windows. So this one, the windows are on either side so that I can see the sunrise and sunset. Pretty cool, right? So that took about that 30 minutes, just like you had to make your house, which is kind of a long time. We had to work on that all on hand too, right? Because nothing was able to automatically make that house. So it's a lot of work that you're putting into to make that scale model, but it's really important because you're able to test and see, hey, if your design worked. So now we're ready to make the real house, right? But what if there's a different way than having to make your own model with your own hands. Well, today we're gonna to explore one of those ways with 3D printing. So right over here, I've got a 3D printer 
all hooked up and ready to print out whatever we need. But to end up making our house, we would have to make our design in what is called a computer aided design program or CAD. So in that CAD program, we'd have to make our design from the ground up and then put it into a format that our 3D printer is ready to understand and print out. So let's go ahead and take a look at a CAD program right now. So right here, we have a model that I ended up making in about six minutes uh, as the base for the house that we just made a moment ago. So looking around here, uh, you could see there's quite a few complex shapes that were added in. But the way that Tinkercad works is it's pretty simple. All it is is you either add or subtract from your models using shapes. So let's say I wanted to add in another window. What I could do is I could grab this box here and drag it into my workspace. And I can reshape it using all of these squares here. And it'll even tell me how large it is. So this is a one inch by one inch cube. I could shrink it down, say, I want this to be just half an inch by half an inch. Same with how tall it is, just like that. And now I can drag it around to where I want it to be. Let's say I want it there, but I want it to be up higher, just about even with this doorknob. I'm gonna grab this arrow and drag it up. That way it's nice and even there. Now, right now we have our object here marked as solid. So objects in Tinkercad can either be a solid or a whole. So what's going to be printed is anything that's solid, and then a hole is going to end up cutting through anything that's solid. So there I've got my hole there, and I've got a window. So that's kind of how Tinkercad is going to end up used. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to head right up here to export. And any of these here for 3D print, once you save it as that, you're ready to take it over to a 3D printer and go ahead and have it printed out. So let's go ahead and do that. And right here, we have our 3D printed house that you actually just got to see finished printing. So just like with our paper model, it's got every single design requirement that we need. So we've got our slanted roof to end up protecting the house. We have our door right here and our windows going all the way through. Now there's one issue that this has that our paper house did not. So in our design, we ended up accidentally making our doorway a little too short. And we were able to figure this out when we have our small scale person here try and go through that door. So right here, what's gonna end up happening is each time our person tries to go through, they keep hitting their head on the door frame because we didn't have it at that three inches tall like we really needed to in our design. It ended up reflecting in our 3D print. So we can't fix it after the fact. But the important thing with rapid prototyping is the fact that we did it on the small scale model, right? So we found it here instead of building the whole house and then figuring out that our door isn't big enough. So that's super helpful when it comes to rapid prototyping. So next up, we've got a few questions that we want to go over. So go ahead and get out your engineering notebooks and uh, write down some thoughts and answers you have for these. So question number one, why is it a good idea to build a small scale model before you build the real thing? And question number two, what else could you design with a computer aided designing software? All right, well, that's all that we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a fun with our project today and maybe that you learned a little something along the way. Make sure to go ahead and send in a picture or video of your house that you made uh, to the Expo event page for a chance to win a prize. Until then, see you next time.